oh, well, seed oil consumption has gone up since then. You know, Rubik's Cube use has also gone up since the 1970s when it was invented. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that's the cause of obesity if we're just talking about correlations. Just to be safe, I don't use Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. If you look at some of the graphs that are put together, looking at causes and potential causes of obesity, things that happened in the 1970s and the rate of obesity now, that's the same logic people are using. You know, it's like, oh, well, seed oil consumption has gone up since then. You know, Rubik's cube use has also gone up since the 1970s when it was invented. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that's the cause of obesity if we're just talking about correlations. Just to be safe, I don't use Rubik's cubes. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yep. Uh, but there's a number of medications that do this. So like the SGLT2s, SGLT2s. for example, they're going to raise LDL a little bit, which sounds like a terrible idea for heart disease. But in the context of someone with generally uncontrolled diabetes, mm -hmm. that lowering of the A1C and the reduction in hyperglycemia is actually cardioprotective. It has a net positive, even if you're shuffling something around. And people that are on an SGLT are also usually going to be on a statin medication mm -hmm. that's going to reduce risk. There's some degree, independent of the amount of LDL lowering, some of those pleiotrophic effects on endothelial function and inflammation that statins also have. Mm -hmm. um, and those are pleiotrophic, those are benefits that that's not a harm that statin causes. Some people will conflate statins with harm, so I want to be clear there. Yeah, that's a good delineation. Maybe instead of our scale model of weighing benefits and detriments for deciding what, when to utilize pharmacotherapy, instead we need to use a meme template where it's like a, it's a game show. You give up uh, LDL, your LDL goes up by 10, but in return, you get an A1C from eight to seven. Hmm. And people might, um, be more receptive to or understand the trade-offs of medication slightly better. Uh, I might like a little more A1C lowering for that kind of an LDL trade-off. Is there any bartering involved here? Uh, I suppose you could uh, barter with the dose or barter <laughs> with the frequency. For example, let's say that it's an individual that has foreskin or an individual with two X chromosomes. You might not want to dose the SGLT2 every day. You might want to pulse it or give them a bit of a rest. That sounds for like an individualized approach. Yeah, this is another darn individualized approach. Somebody is going to make a drinking game every time we say individualized. Rats. Yeah. <laughs> That's Everybody. a bit of an inside joke, but um, some people may find that funny. Yeah, regarding yeah. the preclinical data, by the way. Yeah. That's the inside joke. And statins, they increase lipoprotein little a, but lower cardiovascular events. Yeah, another inconvenience. So you think if LP little a increases, that is going to um, lead to more heart attacks and strokes. But paradoxically, if you look up the guidelines for individuals with high lipoprotein little a, usually defined over 75, certainly 100 and over, the first line of treatment is getting on statin, which raises your lipoprotein little a. But you know things are out there that do lower lipoprotein little a, especially things that you eat. <sighs> yes, I suppose so. Um, my favorite thing personally that lowers lipoprotein little a is synthetic androgens and synthetic estrogens, both. But that's something we'll have to save for another podcast because this is the seed oil podcast, not the synthetic hormone podcast. I suppose we need a synthetic androgen podcast. Yeah, we usually tie in um, hormones in some way, whether they're, they're synthetic or bioidentical. Um, yes, TRT uh, can lo lower lipoprotein little a. But uh, like anything else, um, dietary sources, food is medicine. Uh, please debate us if you do not think food is medicine.